Good afternoon. Let me get make sure. All right, can you guys hear me all right? All right? Good afternoon and welcome to the 2019 Cox Inspirational Student Hero Awards. My name is David Delaman. I'm the Vice President of Cox's Gulf Coast Market and I wanted to extend a warm welcome to each of you here today as we celebrate the amazing accomplishments of each of these students. If you will start by please standing, we'll begin with the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. When our company's founder, Governor James M. Cox, started Cox over 120 years ago, he knew he had to take care of those who came behind him. Being a former school teacher himself, Governor Cox pledged to give back to students in the communities we serve and make sure they have the tools necessary to receive a quality education. Fast forward to today and you'll see the Cox family still living that pledge. Today's students are tomorrow's future. In this room we have future community leaders, doctors, lawyers, teachers, electricians, maybe even a superintendent of schools. Sometimes though, kids, just like the adults, hit obstacles in their lives. Today, we'll recognize 35 students from across Okaloosa County who not have just hit an obstacle, but overcame those obstacles while still maintaining a positive attitude. These heroes have endured unthinkable challenges in their life, yet they come to school each and every day with their heads up and smiles on their faces, inspiring those around them. It's a privilege for all of us at Cox to honor these students. We started this program in our New Orleans market 26 years ago, and today we honor heroes all across the Southeast. The 35 students we recognize today join an elite list of Cox heroes who continue to inspire those they encounter. Their positive attitudes they display on a daily basis provide a little extra sunshine to those around them. Today, we turn the spotlight back on them. On behalf of all of our Cox employees locally, Thank you for taking time to join us for this celebration and congratulations to each of our heroes. At this time, I'd like to turn the program to Cam, over to Cam Johnson from our government and public affairs team. Thank you, David, and thank you again to everyone for being here today. Uh, this is an outstanding event. I think you're all going to really be in for a lot of great stories, and hopefully somebody brought a box of tissues, because I'm sure we're going to need it by the time we're done here today. Obviously, this is a, a great program that we could not do without the cooperation of the Okaloosa County School District. So I'd like to ask Superintendent of Schools, Marcus Chambers, to come up and say a few words. Good afternoon. All right. So first of all, this is what education is all about. You know, education is about the students and about what happens in our schools and our communities each and every day. But I do want to just uh, say a few words really quickly. You know, with us today, we do have our board members. We have Mr. Tim Bryant and Dr. Kelly who are here with us today. So let's give them a round of applause. And these two individuals, if you do not know, they are out and about in schools every day and they see what's going on and they see our students. I'd also like to recognize our principals who are here and assistant principals who are here. Thank you for being here and recognizing our students. Let's give them a round of applause. And then I'd also like to say, especially with it being Teacher Appreciation Week, we have a number of teachers who are here, those who will be presenting and those who are just simply here. And what we said, uh, one of the things that we said this week is teaching is one of the most noblest of professions. And to be here to do what they're about to do today for our students I think is absolutely fantastic. And to our students, I do want to say to you, you know, sometimes in life you become a grown-up, you have difficulties, and sometimes even as grown-ups that's when we start to learn to be able to cope and deal with these types of situations. And how remarkable is it that we have elementary students, middle school students, high school students who are already overcoming obstacles in their lives, whether it be illness or other situations. So today is a day that I'm extremely proud of. I know that our principals are proud of and those who are in the school system are extremely proud to be here to honor our students. And I do want to say to Cox, we thank you very much for sponsoring this event. Obviously, this would not happen without you. 
And to do this for our students is something that we could never say thank you enough. So we appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you very much. It is absolutely our pleasure. This, I, I think I can speak for all of us at Cox. This is our favorite event of the year. Uh, we look forward to this event. That's why we've grown it across the Southeast region. Uh, and I'd also like to welcome our school board members, uh, Dr. Kelly, Mr. Bryant, for, for taking time out of your day to be here today. Uh, I'd also like to welcome, uh, traveling in from Baton Rouge, Louisiana this morning, our Vice President of Government and Public Affairs uh, for the Southeast region, Cox Southeast region, Fran Gladden is here as well. So Fran, thank you so much for coming today. So we see the so-called superheroes every day, whether they're on the big screen right now breaking box office records or playing on a local baseball diamond. The term hero does get tossed around quite a bit. Heroes bring us joy, they inspire, and they keep our spirits up, and they raise those spirits of everyone around them. And that's what these students here today do for us. These students have endured the hardships in their lives, but today we get to celebrate their successes. While these students might not be an all-star all -star athlete or they might not be a valedictorian, they are inspirations in their own right and they deserve their time in the sunshine. So let's do that now and let's get on with the rewards, with the awards, excuse me. Each student will be called up front uh, along with their presenter. The presenter will be at the podium. We actually have an X here uh, with, with some tape on the right-hand side of the podium. Uh, that is for our videographer and our photographer to, to be able to see the student, of course, for y'all to be able to see as well. Uh, the student will be called up. The presenter will tell a uh, brief explanation of why this student was selected hero. Uh, some stories will be longer, some stories will be more detailed. It, we want you guys to uh, say whatever you are comfortable with uh, regarding the, the student's story. Uh, we do ask, as David mentioned, we have 35 students here today, so we do ask that you keep your, your comments brief, but uh, please tell us why your student was selected as a hero. Following the introduction, the student will then go with their presenter over to my left, to y'all's right, uh, where, where David and Frank Gladden and Kristen Longley, our Director of Public and Government Affairs uh, in Pensacola, will present them with a medallion that has their name and school engraved on the back of it, uh, a certificate uh, from Cox Communications, a certificate from Congressman Matt Gates, and also a certificate from State Representative Mel Ponder. Excuse me. Uh, the students will then pose for a photo, which will actually be printed out while they wait. And then we also have a little sweet surprise for them before they go sit down. Um, we do ask that all students do stay for the end because we're going to take a group shot. So if you are able to stay for the end of the presentation, please do so. When the students checked in, they were given a name badge. On the back of that badge is a number. That's the order in which we're going to call you up. So we're going to do an alphabetical order by schools. Uh, so I'm going to ask that numbers 1 through 10 go ahead and line up to my right, your left. You'll see the two gentlemen over here with Cox volunteer shirts on. If the students and your presenter can please go uh, line up over there with, with Sean and Nick, they're going to get you guys in numerical order. As we get closer to probably around number seven or eight, I'll ask for the next group and then so on and so forth until we get through all 35 of our students. Um, again, as we are about to get started, as they line them up, I'll remind you, please keep your comments brief, and I know I'll do it, so I'm going to go ahead and apologize for all the names that I will butcher today. Um, I, if I do mispronounce your name, I do apologize. And I do believe Antioch is ready. So we do have our, our first hero ready to go. Uh, coming from Antioch Elementary School is Damian Pina, and it'll be introduced by Jennifer Langston. Hi. Am I good? I'm Jennifer Langston with Antioch Elementary School, and it has been my privilege to work, sorry, with Damian Pena. After a 17 year break in my teaching career, <clears throat> as I sat down to read about my students last fall, I read that Damian spent most of his days screaming because he did not want to be at school or put in the work. He often had to be removed from the class by the teacher and on some really rough days by the principal. I started the year out setting clear rules and positive expectations for Damien. We smiled a lot. <laughs> we got his ABA therapist, other teachers, parents, and admin on board. But most importantly, we got Damien on board. Mr. Carter. 
Damien realized that he wanted to be part of our class family and environment. He enjoyed the intrinsic feeling from being a student leader. He wanted those high fives and to enjoy the feeling of being part of our group. Damien had decided that it was time to take all of the strategies that he had been given and work on himself. What a huge accomplishment for a child to accept. Some adults never grasp this concept. Damien worked through his emotions, through the easiest of task avoidance, through his desire to be home rather than at school. And I'm proud to say that Damien's extremely hard work has paid off. He is a leader not only in his teacher's eyes, but his classmates as well. He's funny, he's smart, outgoing, friendly, hardworking, but most of all, Damien is happy. Damien is a hero in my eyes for being able to look at himself and be a better person. He makes me want to do the same. What a better place our world would be if we all worked on ourselves the way that Damien has. Damien, thank you for letting me, teaching me lessons. Mostly, thank you for showing me how hard work, even when it's uncomfortable, can change the world for a better place. Alyssa Truss is our hero from Baker School, and Mike Martello is going to tell us why. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Martello, and I'm principal at Baker School, and it's, a, it's an honor to be here with Miss Truss to introduce her to you. Uh, Alyssa's mom, a single mother of five, was taken by lung cancer when Alyssa was 15 years old. Her older sister is now the guardian of her family. As a troubled freshman, she took a destructive path, getting involved in many destructive activities. Consequently, during her ninth grade year, her academics suffered and Alyssa was retained. It was at that point that, as Alyssa says, Jesus saved her life and that now her faith drives all that she does. Currently, Alyssa makes straight A's and sports a 3.87 GPA. She is a leader in Baker School's Junior ROTC program, a starter on the girls' varsity basketball team, and an active member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She was a founding member of a group called The Ultimate Mission, whose mission is to spread the love of God through mission projects. With the greatest humility, she shows outstanding moral character, sound judgment, and she lives her faith by putting others before herself. For those reasons and those difficulties she has passed through, she is an inspiration to everyone who is around her. Therefore, Alyssa Truss is Baker School's Cox Inspirational Hero Award winner. Casey Wood is the hero for Blue Water Elementary School. Uh, and Marissa Egrell, Egrell, excuse me, will tell us why. Good afternoon. I'm Marissa Grell. Um, I have had the honor of being Casey's homeroom teacher and ELA and social studies teacher this year. Um, when Casey first came to us in October, he faced some challenges that a lot of other students his age do not face. But in spite of that, he came to school every day with a smile on his face and a can-do spirit. Every day, Casey worked hard to complete any assignments and assessments that came his way, even though he didn't always have the prerequisite skills that he needed. He never complained. He never said, I can't, or I don't know how. He always did. Um, as we got to know him, his infectious personality and smile touched everybody, um, including his teachers and his classmates. Um, by the end of the second quarter, he had already increased his iReady diagnostic scores um, by one grade level in reading and two grade levels in math. Um, throughout the year, he continued to flourish both socially and academically. Finally, by the end of year diagnostics, um, Casey's scores increased in both reading and math by another grade level. And um, with so much catching up to do, one might have easily given up, but not our Casey. He has been an inspiration to me and his science and math teacher, Claire Irk, 
who have had the opportunity to work with him and get to know him this year, as well as um, other teachers and administrators and students. Um, we know that with Casey's positive attitude and perseverance, he will continue increasing his knowledge and skills and go on to do great things. This is why Casey is Blue Water's hero and our hero. This is Casey Wood. <laughs> Bob Sykes Elementary School chose Devontae Miles as their hero, and Amanda Tapman was going to tell us his story. Good afternoon. I'm Amanda Tapman from Bob Sykes. Uh, Devontae here was enrolled with Bob Sykes last January of the 2017-2018 school year. When he enrolled, he was placed with a foster care family in our school zone with his two brothers. Devante had a tough time adjusting to his new school and his new home life. He ended the school with roughly 20 discipline referrals, but we won't dwell on that because let's fast forward to this year. Hold on, I don't want to lose my spot. Um, we, Devante came in ready and focused to make positive changes. In October, he and his brothers were adopted and he was officially a Miles. Nothing made this kid happier. It was wonderful to see. Each day, Devante wears the biggest and brightest smile. He is eager to please his teachers at school and works really hard every day. <laughs> he thrives on <laughs> positivity. <laughs> With a new focus, Devante was able to make it through the first, second, and third nine weeks this year without one discipline referral. His teachers and Title I instructors are really looking forward to seeing his continued growth over the next two years at Bob Sykes. Devante Miles. <laughs> Assistant Principal Heather Williams from Bruner Middle School will tell us about their hero, Jada Gochenauer. Good afternoon. Um, I have the privilege of speaking about our Jada. Um, Jada didn't want to be recognized publicly up here, so I am more than happy to uh, speak on her behalf. Last year, Jada came to Bruner um, and made it about a week um, before the stress and chaos of middle school became too much. Um, the stress and anxiety was overwhelming for her, and she was unable to focus, and a lot of times she was leaving before the end of the school day. Fast forward to this school year. Jada has made it. Jada, we see her in the hallways. Um, she has improved in monumental ways. Um, not only are her grades improving to honor roll levels, um, but she has become more independent and moves throughout the hallways with confidence and a defined purpose. She is more in relaxed. She interacts with her peers readily and advocates for her needs. Um, there's been several times when Jada has come into my office this year and asked for things. And when Jada asks for something, we make it happen because we are just so proud of her for being able to speak for herself. Um, she's a model of what we desire in Bruner students. And she is definitely a true reflection on what it takes to become an overcomer. So again, Jada, you know, I know you're out here. Congratulations. Major Scott Bates from Choctahatchee High School will now tell us what makes Connor Cabral a hero. Good afternoon. I'm Major Scott Bates from Choctahatchee High School. I am the senior aerospace science instructor there. Connor is uh, one of our uh, cadets there, and uh, I have the privilege of introducing you uh, today. Connor's a senior at uh, Choctaw High School. He's a three-year Air Force Junior ROTC cadet. Uh, he serves as an inspiration to his fellow students and cadets. His uh, outlook is bright. He attacks every task in front of him with amazing attitude and an inquisitive spirit that is infectious. He always will uh, redouble check and, and uh, reinforce uh, anything that we uh, have him do, any task that we have him do. So that is, that is uh, refreshing. Among Connor's personal successes, uh, we've awarded him the Superior Performance Ribbon. That is a, a, a 
an award that we award our cadets, a top 10% of our cadet corps annually for outstanding achievement. And he is a recent recipient of the American Legion Scholastic Award. Uh, it recognizes top 25% of, of his uh, Air Force Junior RTC class. He's gonna be uh, graduating this year with a 3.6 overall GPA, and he's number 98, ranked number 98 out of 346 graduating seniors. He overcomes barriers every day. I've never known him to uh, be down or uh, use anything that, uh, any of his uh, challenges uh, to excuse him from any of his responsibilities as a student or cadet. He's always willing to help his community. He's ha he has over 20 community service hours uh, with us, uh, and he's participated in uh, everything from our annual Fort Walton Beach Holiday Parade to our uh, Defuniac Springs Farm Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Connor Cabral. Crestview Chandler Stallings is a 2019 hero for the Bulldogs, and Dexter Day will give us the details. Good evening, I'm Dexter Day. I'm principal at Crestview High School, and I present to you Crestview High School Cox Inspirational Hero Award winner, Chandler Stallings. Chandler is a young man of extraordinary courage, strength, determination, commitment. And in spite of the great challenges, he set, met, and exceeded his goals to be in the big red machine, and never once used his challenges is the excuse. Chandler was selected by Mr. Dunn, our band, band director. Chandler has spent many years in physical discomfort due to a leg deformity. He endured several surgeries to correct the deformity. He spent weeks with various devices attached to his bones, and not once had he asked for special privileges to leave early, to be late. He just wanted to be one of the students and never complained. He was at times on crutches in a wheelchair. This was all the while he was in the big red machine and never faltered. At the beginning of his junior year, Chandler experienced something that we hate for any child to have to endure. He lost his father. Despite this, Chandler continues to have the greatest attitude, challenges or opportunities or achievement for him. He makes everyone around him better just by being who he is. And I'm very, it's very hard to inspire me. People have to be very, very inspirational, and this young man inspires me to no end. And in spite of his challenges, he's rose through the ranks of the band and became a leader in his section and a valuable performer both on the field and in the concert hall. Chandler helped everyone with his example. He truly inspired those around him to push in spite of whatever challenges and discomforts they were experiencing. He is truly an inspirational hero to us all. Chandler Stallings, Crestview High School. Right there. Davidson Middle School's Alex Morton will now be introduced by Nicole Watson. Hello, I'm Nicole Watson and next to me is Alex Morton. What makes a hero? Is it someone who wears a red cape or swoops in to save the day? Maybe, but in, the, in my eyes, it is someone who is faced with adversities and still strives to be the best that they can be. When asked for an example of a hero based on that outline, I believe strongly that an ex example would be an eighth grade student, Alex. He, I have the pleasure of teaching Alex in my intensive reading class. He suffers from juvenile arthritis in his joints. When it is especially cold, and I keep it very cold in my room, it becomes painful for him to write and basically fun function day to day. Other times I have observed him pulling away from other students for he is embarrassed by his obstacles and doesn't want to bring anyone down in his group work. But then he finds the motivation to set the pain aside and move forward. His thoughtfulness for others is apparent in all he does. He is extremely well-mannered and an ideal student. He is a very likable young man and other students understand his obstacles and, but still love and motivate him to be part of their success. Alex is always willing to give a helping hand even though he is often in pain. His parents are also a positive influence on him. Educational success is obvious. Even though Alex has difficulties writing, he never lets that hold him back. I know I can always count on him to turn in his work, participate in class with any questions I ask. 
Alex is often shy. However, he never misses a moment to make a new friend. For those reasons, I believe strongly that he is a role model for others who are facing their own struggles inside and his positive attitude about education and life overcoming any hardships. He is, a, he is an all-around inspiration, but mostly he inspires me daily not to be selfish, to be open-minded, and love life no matter what I am faced with. Alex Morton, inspirational hero. Coming up next to the podium is Anna Nordlander, and she's going to tell us about Destin Elementary School's hero, River Lee Miller. Good afternoon. River Lee Miller is a happy, active, and bright six-year-old girl. She loves being in kindergarten and loves being a Destin Elementary Dolphin. Everything changed for River Lee on December 26th. This seemingly healthy little girl had a moderate brain bleed and slipped into a coma for almost two weeks. <clears throat> the doctors discovered that she has AVM, which is arterivenous malformation, which means she had a tangle of blood vessels in her brain. The doctors also found a mass that appeared to be a brain tumor. Thankfully, her doctors were able to completely surgically remove the mass and the knotted veins. River Lee had to relearn how to walk, talk, swallow, and many more daily things that most of us take for granted. As soon as River Lee was able to return home, she begged to start school again. Within a couple of weeks, we were able to get her enrolled in the homebound program, and I have the privilege of homeschooling her every day after school. River Lee is determined to return to Destin Elementary for first, for first grade next school year, and she is on track to achieve her goal. Her drive and resilience not only inspires her classmates, but she also inspired a whole community to come together and support. River Lee Miller, you are my superhero, and I am so proud to be your teacher and your friend. Dasha Bush Karova is the hero from Destin Middle School. Julie Dillon will tell us why she was selected. Hello. I want to start off, um, first of all, by saying what an honor it is to be here um, to not for to all of these students. You are inspirations to all of us, and we are proud. We're proud of Dasha, and we're proud of every child in this room. Uh, you make a huge difference. Dasha has been a Destin Marlin since she was in fifth grade. Last year in seventh grade, she was faced with some personal struggles as well as some medical struggles. And it um, reflected in her grades and um, some of her personality. She, so this year, Dasha has come back and First day of school, out of the gate, there's Dasha, huge smile on her face. Um, in the classroom, Dasha has a positive attitude. She works diligently and she assists others without prompting. She is focused and determined with energy and enthusiasm for school. Dasha started this year in some regular classes. It wasn't long before Dasha was in my office telling me that she wanted the challenge and environment of advanced classes. We absolutely were proud to move Dasha to advanced classes and I am happy to say that she has succeeded and she has A's in those classes. Dasha is empathetic, understanding, she's considerate of her peers and she's an advocate for those who may not have the courage to speak out for themselves. She's creative and personable, and her positive attitude and perseverance are recognized by her teachers and her peers. And today, I eat um, every day. I'm in the lunchroom with the eighth graders, so I get to see Dasha on a daily basis um, along with her peers. And today, I had the opportunity to talk with some of Dasha's friends and peers, and I asked them, if you could 
give me one word that describes Dasha, what would that be? Immediately, there was a huge smile on all of their faces, but I started to see them stalling. It was very difficult for them to come up with one word. So I wanna share these with Dasha so she knows what an inspiration she is to her fellow students. They said kind, giving, funny, optimistic, optimistic, radiant, sweet, talented, inspirational, generous. And like I said, many of the students couldn't come up with just one word. And some of them said, she is not afraid to take rest, risks. She's the best. She gives advice. She is so many things she can't be described in one word. She is a Marland and we love her. Dasha is an inspiration to all of us and we could not be proud of her and her accomplishments. Dasha Bochkarova, Destin Middle School. Annabella Duque from Edge Elementary School is our next student. Angela Berry will tell us what makes her a hero. It's my pleasure to introduce Annabella Duque as Edge Elementary's Cox Student Hero nominee. Annabella joined us this year and I'm one of her fifth grade teachers. Despite a physical condition that causes her great chronic pain and discomfort, Annabella greets us every single day with a smile and often a joke to share. She is a frequent visitor at Shriners Children's Hospital in Tampa and often has days that require the use of a wheelchair, yet she keeps her positive outlook and never lets it slow her down. It is my pleasure to nominate Annabella on behalf of everyone at EDGE. Edwin Elementary School's Jacob Bryan is next. Ms. Gunal will tell us what makes Jacob special. Jacob was not able to be here this evening, but I still wanted to share his story. Jacob is a fifth grade student at Ed Edwin's Elementary where he has attended school since kindergarten. He is happy and has overcome many challenges. Over the years, Jacob has developed a positive attitude that has helped him to be successful in his academics and personal life. With the support of his CBS teachers, Jacob learned calming techniques and other strategies to strengthen his emotional stamina. Jacob has experienced academic success in all areas, but mostly in math, where he is mainstreamed with his peers. His teachers attribute his academic success to the effort he puts into his studies on a daily basis. He can be seen studying on the car ramp in the afternoons or just about anywhere else. He even asks for extra work. This wasn't always the case as Jacob's grades have improved greatly over his years at Edwin's Elementary. Jacob has had many wonderful teachers over the years to include Ms. Parnell, Ms. McAllister, and me. <laughs> we all agree that Jacob has learned to trust people as demonstrated by his willingness to share his feelings and ability to articulate his emotions. He in turn has become a great friend to other students that have experienced difficult life circumstances. He gives back simply by being a good friend. He has shown bravery by stepping out of his comfort zone on many occasions and in various areas of life. His courage to work hard despite some tough luck is an inspiration to all that know and love him. Thank you. Zachary Ford is Eglin Elementary School's hero for 2019, 19, excuse me, and Dennis Samak will give us more on his story. Thank you. I'm honored to introduce Eglin Elementary's hero, Zachary Ford. Zachary's a fourth grader and is an active student who enjoys playing soccer and basketball. He's courteous to each and every person that he greets, and he has an enormous uh, large heart. All the students who know him call him friend. However, school and learning wasn't always easy for Zachary. He struggled with reading comprehension and also some processing of material. He wasn't excited to come to school. He felt that he was falling behind with his grades and he watched other classmates who seemed to catch on to new materials quickly. He felt overwhelmed. 
Zachary is an excellent example, though, of perseverance. <clears throat> when the school materials got tough and he felt that he couldn't find success, he reached out to his parents, his teachers, and his support system to help him master his goals. He kept a great attitude and received some services that he needed with learning and processing. His third grade teachers worked with him and guided him and pushed him along the way. All of a sudden, reading began to snap into place. Today he reads nightly. He enjoys sharing what he hears, sees, and feels in the literature that he reads. Zachary agrees that readers make great leaders. Along with Zachary, I'd like to congratulate his parents who went the extra mile to support their son. Today, Zachary is right on track with his education. It is my pleasure to introduce Zachary Ford, our hero. Elliot Points, Kathy Ard will now turn the spotlight on their hero, Charlie Ingalls. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to introduce Charlie Ingalls. Um, as the principal of Elliott Point, I chose to introduce him because I've known Charlie since he was a kindergartner. Actually, when I started as assistant principal, Charlie was one of the first students I met. And that was because at that point in Charlie's life, Charlie was having a very hard time with behavior. Don't let his little size fool you. There was a time where Charlie could clear out a classroom. Um, many times I probably, myself and a few others, carried Charlie in from the PE field. But that was a long time ago. Uh, Charlie was placed in the Emotional um, Behavior Disabilities classroom and has gone through that for a few years. And during that time, he has just had a huge turnaround. Um, before, when struggles in academics were presented, that's when we saw behavior from Charlie. Um, Charlie didn't want to try, and instead of attempting something, Charlie would shut down or we would see his behavior. And at one time, just a few years ago, Charlie was two years behind grade level. I'm happy to report that right now he is holding his own with fifth grade material, and he is on grade level. In the last few days on FSA, Charlie has taken his extended time and really worked hard and felt good about what he did. Uh, Charlie has an amazing attitude. When he gets off the bus, he is the first one to say good morning to every adult he sees. He is smiling and greets the students and the adults in the classroom and all the way in the hallway. So he makes us feel good knowing Charlie's in the building. Charlie also has been a wonderful support to his sister. His older sister was, is a cancer survivor and Charlie has been a great support system to her and Charlie has been a big member of our Relay for Life teams at Elliott Point, raising money and walking laps to raise money for a cure for cancer. Um, Charlie's attitude is fantastic now. He is going to go to middle school next year, and he is working his way into out classes, and I think by the end of his sixth grade year, he won't need any of special supports that he's getting right now. And that's all because Charlie decided that Charlie wanted to thrive. It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Charlie Ingalls. <laughs> Elena Asoria is the hero from Florosa, and Dawn Massey will share more. Good afternoon. I'm Dawn Massey. I am the principal at Florosa Elementary School. I'm proud to announce that Florosa Elementary's Cox Inspirational Hero is Astrid E. Osorio. We call her Elena. She is an ELL student in fifth grade at Florosa. Two years ago, she came to us unable to speak a word of English. This year, she has been on the AB Honor Roll and is making tremendous learning gains. Alina entered the MLK poster and oratorical contest this year. She is passionate about equality and delivered a powerful speech to over 60 families in that room. Alina has overcome many adversities that have led her to this achievement and we are so proud of her at Florosa Elementary. Alina has a few words she'd like to share with you all today. So first, I want to say thank you to God, and this achievement is really big for me, and say thank you to my family, and people in my school, 
everybody in my school are also part of this achievement. I will, I will be always waiting for more achievements like this one. One time my dad told me, if I can do it, you can do it too. Never give up and follow your dreams. My, when my experience coming to United, the United States was hard, I learned many lessons throughout this experience too. One of the lessons I learned was to take care of your family and they will always support you. Thank you. Dylan Entenberg is the Fort Walton Beach High School Viking hero, and Dr. Linda Dugan is going to tell us why. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Spolsky for allowing me to be the presenter over this outstanding hero. It took me a week to put this together, and it's not because I didn't have enough time, Mr. Spolsky. However, this was, it was a tough one to write, so I'm going to I'm talk to you, but I'm going to talk to you from the heart because I really got to know this young man and my 30 years as a guidance counselor. This young man has not only touched my heart, but he's touched a lot in our community and at our school, and you'll, you'll understand why. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. This statement best describes our hero, Dylan Antenberg. Despite 17 hospitalizations, going unconscious 12 times, and entering catatonic states, Dylan's life of being a perfectly healthy scholar-athlete changed on November the 3rd, 2017, the day after Dylan's 16th birthday. Dylan became a survivor, a fighter, and a miracle. Dylan has always been an incredible runner, full of energy and passion for helping others. This day would soon be etched in Dylan and his family's life forever. As a sophomore at Fort Walton Beach High School and member of the cross country and track teams, Dylan went from running championship times to fainting and entering an unconscious stage. It was the beginning of a long journey of fighting to survive. His car rides became ambulance trips. His bedroom was a hospital bed with constant interruptions and sounds of beeps and IV drips. Family dinners on a plate had to be eaten from a sip of a straw, and the ability to talk had ceased. His mother and father's lives changed too. Instead of running to all the sporting competitions, they were talking with doctors and nurses daily, entering a totally different competition called the Battle of Life. At first, doctors could not determine how a perfectly healthy runner would black out and enter unconscious stages. Solid foods were gone, liquid was introduced, a wheelchair became his legs, and his parents were his crutches, and his faith became his strength. He lost total independence. His parents would exchange shifts at the hospital, at times never closing their eyes. 17 times in the hospital, with the complexity of diagnosis, doctors continued searching for the right answers. From the Children's Hospital in Florida to the Mayo Clinic in Alabama, back to Florida, to a specialty hospital in Tennessee, back to Florida again, Dylan never gave up. Dylan was airlifted to Virginia where he would have to stay for three months to receive intensive treatment from every type of specialist. From the wings of an airplane to a wheelchair, Dylan had to transition into a temporary home to survive. He lost over 20 plus pounds, lost the ability to walk and run, lost his ability to drive, lost his independence, and lost attending as a full-time student as he had to enter the hospital homebound program. After all the hospitalizations, the marathon of doctors, and multitude of researching for the correct diagnosis, Dylan was airlifted to the hospital that would intensive medical help for the next three months of Virginia, where he would soon begin to recover. The journey was long. It was incredibly difficult by both Dylan, his parents, his friends, and yes, me, his counselor. Dylan went from being diagnosed with five and six different things to dysfunction of autonomous nervous system. And I probably still don't have that quite correct, so I'm sure his mom's gonna correct me there. A diagnosis that through intensive medical treatment and therapy, he could eventually outgrow. Days went by and Dylan became stronger and stronger. No longer needing a wheelchair, no longer needing medications, 
Ivory drips and could finally begin to write his name again and eventually speak. As he started to get stronger and relying on his faith, Dylan started prayer groups for the children in the hospital to help everyone heal. He would do these groups every morning until the day he was discharged to return home. He was offered a job there after he graduates from our school and returned to continue his peer counseling and inspire more children. Today, Dylan is a junior at Fort Walton Beach High School, a youth speaker and leader to his church, a leader in our leadership program, and a mentor to children. Since the age of two, Dylan was a child that gave away his toys when he got birthday gifts to children that needed him more than Dylan did. Northwest Florida Daily News and the Emerald Coast Magazine did articles on Dylan at the age of five for his caring and giving of his own toys to help other children. You would never know the difficult things that Dylan has had to overcome if you look at him today. He's a good looking kid. To Dylan, he loves life. Dylan is the epitome of optimistic. He smiles with sincerity with anyone that he con comes in contact with at school or in the community. He would love to attend a university and continue giving back to others. He looks at the smallest things and appreciates them greatly. He greatly appreciates life each day and the air that he breathes because of the situations that he has had been placed in medically. I need some water. Northwest Florida Daily News did an article on Dylan because he helped the Marine Corps League's Toys for Tots program collecting over $1,200 in toys just to give back to the children. His mother always taught Dylan to give back to the community because everyone at some point in their life needs help. Dylan has always given away half of his birthday and Christmas presents since the age of two. His compassion for helping others continued as a student in our leadership program and being immersed in our Christmas Connection program and other things. He was featured in Emerald Coast Family Magazine in an article inspiring kids to care for his kindness and generosity with children. His father describes Dylan as a selfless giver who never rests until he's provided all the help he can provide. To this day, despite his medical illness, his hospitalizations, and so forth, Dylan maintains a 3.57 grade point average. And to, and to sum it up, I'd like to have a, have a quote for Dylan. Sometimes you don't know your own strength until you come face to face with the greatest weaknesses. Dylan is our fighter, a survivor, and on behalf of Mr. Spolsky, his previous principal, Ms. Gunter, and Fort Walton Beach High School, we are proud to say Dylan Antenberg is our high school Cox hero. Anneli Perez is the hero from Kenwood Elementary School, and Joan Pickard will now introduce her. I have the pleasure of presenting Anneli Perez. Anneli is very sweet and is eager to please. She has endured a lot of trials and pain in the past year, and she continues to smile through it all. Anneli tries very hard with her schoolwork and has set goals to achieve better grades. Anneli was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. She had to move unexpectedly and suddenly. She has adapted well to her new state of residency, home life, and other challenges that may arise with having a family of seven living in one home. She looks forward to each day and approaches it with a beautiful smile. She is a blessing to have in our lives and hearts. Anneli Perez. Laurel Hill School's Andrew Roche is our next hero, and Celeste Mott is going to tell us why. So I asked Andrew what or who is responsible for the significant turnaround in his life. He responded, it wasn't just one event or one person. It was a series of events that took place in my life. He credits a good friend, his parents and the many prayers he received throughout the years. Team motivator, respectful, a joy to have in class, funny, 
These are just a few words that are used to describe Andrew today by his peers and other teachers. But that was not always the case. Andrew was placed in an alternative school setting during middle school due to poor, several poor choices. This is where I met him. I enjoyed talking to him, but I have to be honest, I didn't enjoy him academically. Many of the referrals he received more than likely had my signature on it. Andrew shared with me that that was the time that he was angry with how his life was and he didn't care. As much as I wanted to push him away, I was determined to help him pass. Another student, a senior at the time, had an extra class period and would sit with Andrew during math class to help him learn the much needed math with some one-on-one -on -one time. It wasn't enough, it seems. It wasn't until his next year after I had left that he met a friend at school. It was her advice and her stubbornness <laughs> that helped Andrew turn his life around. I eventually moved on to another school, Laurel Hill, and in pre-planning I saw Andrew in the office. My first thoughts, I have to be honest, were not very positive. I was apprehensive of having him in my class, but I was determined to make the best of it. By the end of the first day of fifth period, I had immediately noticed a change. Andrew and I had several conversations about how much we both have changed for the better. He impressed me that day, and he hasn't stopped. He would stand up for me when the other high schoolers were being judgmental. <laughs> he would motivate them by constantly saying, look, you just got to look for the pattern, and then it's easy. Saying those words to other students have inspired the anxiety-filled math students with hope. From day one, I was no longer apprehensive of Andrew being in my class. And I found I started looking forward to seeing him in the halls and in my class. Good morning, Mrs. Mott, I would hear him in the halls. And with sincerity, he would ask, how are you doing today? You doing all right? Yes, Andrew, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I would see him speaking to other adults in the hallways, always making sure to shake their hands as he approached them. I would go to his basketball games, and while other students were on their phone or watching the next game or just socializing, I would watch him do his math on the end of the bleachers after his game was over. There were even times when he approached me during the game and asked for help with a certain problem. He tr truly wants to understand the math that is being taught. During postseason of basketball, Andrew moved up to varsity. He saw it was an honor and a chance to shine. He thanks his coach and his teachers continuously throughout the year for giving him opportunities to grow and to become a better person and a better student. Andrew's coaches have commended him for his talent, his tenacity, and coachability. Even in the softball season, I saw Andrew show up on the field. I asked one of the players, why is Andrew here? Is he the team manager? No, he's our team motivator. He's not just seen as a motivator on the softball field, but in the classroom, in all his classes. He encourages struggling students by challenging them to self-reflect and to reassess the situation. He is humble, yet confident, and takes pride in himself and all he does. Just the other day, Andrew was absent from my class. He was taking his driving test, which he passed, by the way. He called the school on a Friday afternoon, asking if he could come in and make up the test I gave before the day was over. He was worried about getting a zero for an unexcused absence, and he didn't want his grade to go down. And after his driving test, he insisted on stopping by the school to make sure he was responsible academically. I, of course, gave him some extra time to complete the test, I was so moved by his determination. I didn't have the heart to keep him for any extended amount of time on a Friday afternoon. Once again, he came in, shook the teacher's hand, and thanked her for the opportunity he was given. Two years ago, Andrew was not passing math. Not caring, not motivated, 
was the instigator in many situations, and was ready to give up on the world and everyone in it. Today, Andrew is the one that I can depend on to motivate the class. Andrew is the one that I can depend on to work his hardest on all his assignments I give. He spends extra time making sure he understands the concepts so he can be proud of himself. Andrew has worked hard to get where he is. He is not happy with his academic grade in my class at this time. I know, <laughs> but he doesn't give up, no matter what the challenge. He might not be the straight A student in my class, but he will always be an A in my heart and in the hearts of others. In closing, I would like to give you a bit of advice Andrew continues to tell himself. Always be honest and true to yourself. Thank you. Our next hero is from Lewis School. It's Kevin Destin, and Jamie Howe is going to share why he was selected as their hero. I'm Jamie Howell, and I am pleased to introduce Lewis School's inspirational hero, Kevin Destin. It's a little bit of stage fright, but he is here. I have had the pleasure of teaching Kevin for almost two years, and in that time, I have seen him go from shy and unsure of himself to a leader and model citizen to his peers in the classroom. He is consistently positive, polite, caring, and considerate. At only seven months old, Kevin suffered a traumatic brain injury that caused significant and lasting damage. Although he was not expected to survive, he was able to pull through with the support of his medical team, family, and community. Since then, he has undergone many surgeries and medical pre procedures and attended countless therapies. Kevin's resiliency is clearly seen every day through his perseverance, despite the challenges he still faces. Where some would be tempted to give up, Kevin keeps trying. Where some might find reason for negativity, Kevin greets each day with a smile that lights up any room he enters. He is a true inspiration and is so very deserving of this award. So it is my privilege to introduce you to fifth grader from Longwood Elementary School, Jeremiah Blackman. He was selected as their hero. Uh, he just transferred into Longwood this year. So, uh, you know, starting off uh, in elementary school with only one more year to go, is certainly difficult for anybody, for anyone. Uh, he transferred in and of course he didn't want to, to transfer to a new school. He didn't want to go to a new school. Um, he didn't like doing the work that they had at Longwood. He just really didn't want to go to school. Uh, but as the year went on, they started to notice a change in Jeremiah, and Jeremiah changed his attitude and decided that he was going to succeed. He decided to, to take that, that change, take that initiative, and change his uh, attitude and change his grades around. And now he makes uh, straight A's and B's at Longwood. He gets along great with everybody, has adjusted to the new school, and has just a much better outlook. And where are you going to middle school next year, buddy? Prior. Prior? So he'll be going to Pryor pretty soon. So congratulations, Jeremiah. You are Longwood Elementary School's hero for 2019. Yeah, Mary Esther Elementary School's Cameron McLaughlin. It will now be introduced by Amy Anderson. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm Amy Anderson. I'm the assistant principal at Mary Esther Elementary. This is Cameron McLaughlin. Is he smiling? Because I told him to smile. <laughs> yeah. All right. For a couple of years, we didn't get to see that smile very often from Cameron, which is a shame because it's a wonderful smile. Um, his attitude and his actions kind of prevented that. And as assistant principal, we had several deep and meaningful chats about his choices. Um, I am very happy to say that this year, his attitude and actions have allowed us to have much different sorts of chats. He has gotten zero discipline referrals this year, which he is very proud of and he should be. This is his fifth grade year, so he will be going to middle school next year and he will be going with success, with the determination and the ability to make the choices that he needs to make to be successful as an all-around student. We are very proud to introduce Cameron McLaughlin as our Cox Inspirational Hero.
Meg's Middle School said Elijah Evans is their hero. Donna Bourne and others from the school are here to tell us what makes him so special. We really didn't have a fight over who was going to speak, but I am so honored to be the one to speak today. On behalf of Meg's, we're honored to introduce our inspirational hero, Elijah Evans. When Elijah came to Meg's, he was a quiet yet mischievous little sixth grader who struggled to find his place. As a seventh grader, he started to realize his capabilities and began developing leadership skills in the classroom and on the basketball court. Now in his eighth grade year, Elijah has become the leader he was born to be. He was the captain of the basketball team and assisted new teammates. To add to his success athletically, he made the AB honor roll for the first time in his academic career. Elijah keeps a big smile on his face as you can see in the picture in the bulletin. <laughs> and a positive attitude no matter what events are occurring in his personal life. He has struggled with reading comprehension, but with the assistance of his team of teachers and strong work ethic, Elijah has made gains in fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. He often requests to give up PE, and I know that's hard for him, PE time to receive extra support from his teachers. This dedication and effort helped him earn the Meg's Middle School Grit, Growth, and Gains Quarterly Award. Elijah has experienced times of struggle, both at home and at school. He's had to mature and increasingly take on more responsibility in both settings. He's learned to proactively seek support and guidance from his teachers, coaches, and school family in times of need. It's been a most rewarding experience watching Elijah grow during his three years at Meg's, and I'm going to miss this boy. It's obvious how much we adore him as we all wanted to be up here to introduce him. We've always believed in him and knew he had potential to overcome obstacles while understanding the importance of hard work and perseverance. We're excited to see what the future holds, Elijah. So shoot for the moon and reach for the stars, buddy. We're so proud of you. Yeah, I want to see how they get all of them in there for that picture. <laughs> Northwood Elementary School selected Michael Cook as their hero. Aaron Adams shares more. Good afternoon. I'm Aaron Adams, and I am the school counselor at Northwood, and it is my privilege to recognize this wonderful, wonderful young man next to me this afternoon, Michael Cook. I thought long and hard about what I could say about Michael, and there are so many words that I could think that remind me of Michael, but I came across a quote that reminded me of him. Maria Robinson once said, nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending. Northwood Elementary School's inspirational hero, Michael, has done just that this year. This year, Michael transferred to us from a school in Leon County, I believe, over near Tallahassee. And he had a rough, rough start to the beginning of the year, didn't you, buddy? We spent a lot of time talking about ways we could make positive choices in school and improve our grades. He also came to live with his aunt and uncle this year, so that was another family dynamic hurdle that he had to overcome. Michael has started to write that new chapter in his life. He shifted his attitude and behavior and pushed himself to be a leader in one of our small group counseling sessions. Michael's grades have improved tremendously. His once failing grades now have solid C's in math and language arts, and we are so, so proud of his hard work and determination. Michael, I can't wait to see how your story ends, but in the meantime, I am so, so proud that I got to be in a chapter of your life. We are so proud to recognize you as Northwood Elementary's Cox inspirational hero, Michael Cook. <laughs> Millie and Lazarica is representing the Okaloosa STEM Center. Melanie Palmer will tell us what makes her a hero. Um, I had the pleasure of teaching Millian in her sixth grade ELA class and seventh and eighth grade grades for a creative writing elective at STEM Academy. Over the past three years, I've had the honor to witness her metamorphosis into a confident, poised individual who is not afraid to share her talents and voice, her opinion in class, and who initiates time, ideas, and change when she sees areas of needed improvement. 
Even as a sixth grader, Millie displayed a maturity beyond her years with a strong sense of fairness. At the commencement of middle school, Millie was a shy student who was not confident of her abilities. Having suffered difficulties with other children who bullied her about her size in elementary school, Millian suffered from a poor self-image. However, her, she has come to recognize and appreciate her talents and intellect through her years at STEM. Millian is a sensitive individual who cares about the needs of others. Millian's older brother by 10 years was born with physical challenges which prevented Millian from having a deep relationship with him. At birth, the doctors informed her parents that he could die at any time. Living in a household where the focus was her brother's medical needs and the looming face of death has left its mark on her. Her brother passed away the summer before Millian's seventh grade year. <laughs> Since her brother's death, her parents have separated and she suffers from feelings of deep regret and loss. Millian is an initiator. Not having a school library at STEM, Millian started a book drive to add books to a central space for students to read during lunch. She regularly offers input during our creative writing class, which always involves student choice of writing topics and projects. Her voice is valued through our class discussions and Million ensures that all opinions are considered. Million is an insightful, sensitive, and intelligent individual. She impresses me with her ability to articulate difficult concepts and text, her sensitivity to the nuances within literature, and her passion for reading, writing, and creative expression, both in and out of the classroom. She is taking advanced and honors courses <clears throat> and excels in her technology courses, persevering, persevering in spite of her emotional issues. Millian, who is a talented writer, plans to pu publish a novel one day. I have no doubt that she will. She is still developing a voice, and I hope that one day she writes about a young woman who shares the same ethnicity and experiences as herself. It is my honor to know Millian Lazarica. Clue Elementary School named Cameron Pearson their hero, and Karen McAllister is going to tell us why. Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce um, Mrs. Kathy Anderson, who is uh, Cameron's teacher, and she wanted to come tonight in support of this great young man. Cameron is well liked at Plu and excels in sports, especially soccer. He plays on traveling leagues, and he loves the competition. Off the field has been a huge challenge for Cameron. He has struggled with reading since he was in kindergarten at Plu Elementary. He received specialized help for his specific learning disability for years in our ESE resource room. He worked so hard, but still brought home failing grades on reading tests for his parents to sign and ended up with a D or F for final reading grades each year in first, second, third, and fourth grade. He worked really, really hard, not just for months, but for years to make small gains in reading. Most of us, we'd give up or give in. Not Cameron. He persevered and continued to put forth effort and countless hours in reading and tutoring, even though he would rather be on the soccer field. Mrs. Anderson, right here, his teacher, stated that this is her second year to have the pleasure of teaching Cameron, third grade and now fifth grade. Learning has not always been easy for him, but he's willing to work hard to achieve what he knows he needs to do to move to the next level. He has a positive attitude, a strong work ethic, and is kind to his fellow classmates. He's not afraid to face any challenge despite how hard it might be. With this dedication, he made the AB honor roll for the first time in elementary school while in his fifth grade year. <laughs> Mrs. Heald, our ESC teacher, states that Cameron is polite, funny, and kind. He has shown amazing, amazing growth in reading, showing that hard work and believing in oneself always pays off. He loves math and science too, and is able to stay in his regular education class now that his hard work in reading has paid off. He is currently on consult for ESE services. Mrs. Heald said, tell him I miss him, 
but she knows he's excelling in his fifth grade classroom. So I'm honored to introduce Plues, Co Plues Cox inspirational hero, Cameron Pearson. Jonathan Dutton from Pryor Middle School is next to the front of the room, along with Brooke Barron. Hello, I'm Brooke Barron, the principal of Pryor Middle School, and this is Jonathan Dutton, an eighth grader. Um, I did actually have to fight to uh, present Jonathan to you today, as evidenced by the fan club here joining us of teachers and guidance counselors from Pryor. Um, Jonathan has lived quite... Um, a difficult life before coming to us to Pryor. He came to us um, in October of his sixth grade year. Prior to that time, he um, suffered in second grade. His dad tragically died. And then about two years later, when he was in fourth grade, um, his sister, who was a middle school, a middle school student at the time, she committed suicide. Um, so dealing with those two deaths so close together, he had to overcome those hurdles. In addition to that, he struggled himself with dyslexia and depression. Because of that, he missed out on quite a bit of instruction, as you can imagine, um, over the next couple of years of school, and he fell behind in school, so um, he was not on grade level. His mother decided it was time for a fresh start, and in October of his sixth grade year, they moved to Florida, and we were lucky enough to have him as a student at Pryor Middle School. When he came to Pryor, he was a little bit bigger than the rest of the kids, and so he immediately kind of stood out. And um, we had some teachers who just took him right under their wing, one of which was Ginger Clark, who is here today. Um, another one was Ashley Kempton, who I also see here today, came and supported, and uh, Chalice Kappel is here, and our guidance counselor, Dana Mayer, is here. And we have a program called My Team, and they took him on as a mentor, uh, Ms. Clark did, and he began to blossom. Um, they tutored him after school. Ms. Clark tutors him all the time in math, and he stays after for ELA and math tutoring every single day after school. He learned to manage his assignments. Um, he went from planning to drop out of high school when he turned 16. He couldn't wait for that day to come, so he could just drop right out. So now he plans to be the first in his family to graduate from college. He actually went from in sixth grade to seventh grade last year at our, actually this year, we celebrated our seventh grade gains at our pep rally. And he was the student who made the most gains in math in our whole school from sixth to seventh grade on the FSA math. So we can't wait to see what he does now from seventh grade to eighth grade gains. He encourages other students every single day. He's the person who, when a new kid comes to our school and he notices that that new kid doesn't have any friends, he's the person who befriends that student and includes them in everything. He has a positive outlook and he always smiles. He says, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. He's polite to all of his teachers and students. His positive outlook is an inspiration to everybody at Pryor. And this is why he is Pryor's inspirational hero. And we love him. <laughs> Richburg School, Amy, excuse me. Richburg School's Amy Bowles will now introduce us to their hero, Gage Hartz. I am actually the uh, assistant principal at Northwood Elementary, so I got the pleasure of watching Michael Cook get his award, and I also am here representing Richburg School tonight to, um, on behalf of Gage Hartz. He's the gentleman right here, and I taught him, let's just say, a very long time ago if he's a senior. So Gage's positive outlook is truly contagious. He is always wearing a smile, never complains, and gives 100% all the time. He is a true gentleman with a huge heart for helping out everyone who crosses his path. 
Gage has had to con conquer many things when odds should have been against him. He has overcome communication issues and has shown through hard work and his willingness to succeed that a physical disability will not hold back this high school senior that will be graduating at the end of the month. Gage is not Gage has not allowed his disabilities to keep him from participating in the Challenger baseball program and Special Olympics programs. He is also an active member of his church. He fishes, he hunts, for turkeys that is, deer, and he is currently working in the Richburg OJT program at Walmart. Congratulations to Gage Hart for earning the Inspirational Student Cox Hero Award for Richburg School. You are truly an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Trevor Beatty is our hero from Riverside Elementary School, and Amber Johns will tell us what makes him so special. I had the pleasure of teaching Trevor in the first grade, and now again I get to have him as my mentor student for Riverside in our new program. And a hero is someone that has is admired for their courage, outstanding achievements, and honorable qualities. Trevor was nominated because he has demonstrated these characteristics at Riverside in so many ways. The qualities that come to mind immediately are perseverance and determination. Trevor has achieved a lot this year. Not only has he grown academically, he has also grown socially. He may be a quiet boy, but you don't have to be loud to be a leader. He works well with other students, and he will share his ideas in a friendly manner. Life hasn't always treated Trevor fairly. This year alone, Trevor's father was hospitalized for an extended period of time, and his family home caught fire and was destroyed. He had the courage to keep trying. Many days, it probably would have been easier to give up, stay in bed, or ignore the lessons in front of him. He still came to school, and he tried. He worked with other students and his teachers to learn that day's lessons. And if he had a bad day, he took accountability, he accepted responsibility for his choices, and he returned the next day ready to learn. Trevor is an inspiration to us, and if he continues on this positive path, he will go on to do great things. This is why he's our hero. Paul Whitten, Jamie Perry, and Alyssa Torrey of Ruckel Middle School will now introduce, introduce us to their hero, Lauren Lucky. Good afternoon. Lauren Lucky is Ruckel Middle School's Cox Inspirational Hero for this year. Uh, I regret to say that Lauren couldn't be with us tonight. She's in the hospital at UAB. Her parents were there supporting her. The news that we've received from her parents is she's getting stronger every day. So the three of us here are honored, honored to represent Lauren. I have Lauren's guidance counselor, Ms. Perry, who nominated her. And uh, I also have Ms. Tory, who is our intensive reading aide, who had the privilege of being with Lauren every day and helped her maneuver around the school. Lauren's disability confines her to a wheelchair all the time. So we're all gonna say something short, but I wanted to be able to say this for me because it meant something so personal to me, Lauren did. You know, we got terrible news a few weeks ago that um, she, uh, had, had to go to the emergency room, they had to life light her over to Sacred Heart. She had flatlined, they brought her back, and she's undergoing a series of surgeries, and she's coming back because she's a fighter. Lauren came to us this past year from, from Alabama, and uh, she made Ruckle a better place. When you go into a room where Lauren is, it lights up because she does not see her disability. She makes straight A's, she plays her instrument in the band beautifully, she never complains. She always has a smile on her face. She was my personal hero because I went through an injury this year myself. And when I started feeling sorry for myself and eeyore and whiny, uh, I would look up Lauren. I'd either go to the band room, I'd go to the lunch room. I'd find Lauren. I'd look at, look at her and say, you need to buck up. That you don't have anything to worry about because Lauren lives in that wheelchair every day. And she does it. And she makes the people around her better and she attacks life the way it should be attacked, full speed ahead. I'm gonna let Miss Perry say a few words. Um, to echo what he said, she is truly just a ball of sunshine. Um, her teachers would say that she has a can-do attitude, um, a go-getter, she will wheel around that classroom and 
just like anyone else. Um, but she's she's a great student, um, AB honor roll, um, second chair, I believe, in concert band. She played in the uh, football band. She's on the National Junior Honor Society. She's a member of that. Um, just very, she does the, the flying the drones with our robotics team. So she's very involved and just a wonderful, wonderful young lady. Hi, my name is Alisa Tori. Lauren gets really mad when people say my name wrong. Um, I did have the privilege of getting to know Lauren this year and I'm sorry that she's not here. Um, she is everything that a young lady should be. She's smart, she's funny, she's compassionate and kind, but we can say that about a lot of people. Um, the thing that inspires me about Lauren is she never puts limitations on herself and lets other people put limitations on herself, on her. Um, a couple months ago, we were planning the eighth grade trip to Big Kahunas. And I said, maybe we should skip school that day and go shopping. And she said, no, I'm going to go to Big Kahunas. And I said, girl, what are you going to do at Big Kahunas? And she said, if I never did what people told me I couldn't do, I wouldn't do anything. And that has struck me because I limit myself and I let other people limit me, but she never does, which is why she has signed up for the high school marching band and to do drama. And her goal is to become a marine biologist. And Lord willing, she will get through this fight she's in and she will achieve those goals. Thank you. Shalimar Elementary School names Lily Haluska a hero, and Kim McSparren will share why. Hello, I'm Kim McSparren, the principal at Shalimar, and this is Lily. We chose Lily because Lily struggled for several years academically, went through a little phase there for a couple years where she didn't even want to come to school. Um, we had a lot of tardies. Her parents and I had a lot of discussions about how to get Lily motivated. Her, she repeated third grade. One of her third grade teachers, Ms. Spencer, is here. Lily kind of corralled her until she committed to coming, and she's here with us. But this year, Lily's in fourth grade, and Lily has just made a turnaround that we are just so proud of. We started a student council this year, and Ms. Ms. Uh, Pitts, who is one of our teachers, she's our sponsor, and she's also here today, has started student council, and Lily really wanted to be on student council. Ms. Pitts said, that's great but we have a few things that have to happen. First, you have to come to school and we need to work on our grades. So, and one of the requirements was to write a little essay to be able why she wanted to be in student council. And when I read parts of Lily's essay, I said, Lily has just described everything that I would say. So I'm gonna read you what Lily wrote in her own words in order to overcome all of the obstacles that we've had. You ready, Lily? Okay. She says, hi, I'm Lily. And this is how my grades changed. So in the beginning of school, I was really bossy. I'm not gonna lie. I really did not care about anything until I signed up for student council. I knew that there was one chance only and I had to start being real. At that time, my grades were pretty low. I mean, really low to the point where there was only two A's on them. It was PE and music. I really hated this course called social studies. And you're probably wondering what, what grade was. Well, it was an F. I knew I needed to up my grades to be in student council. So I tried and I tried this time and I was in the council. I started to work really hard. I was really scared. But then I saw my grades improve, and I wanted to keep reaching for the sky. And that's why Lily is Shalimar's Cox Inspirational Hero of the Year. Cheryl Seals of Shoal River Middle School will now introduce us to their hero, Jamar Jones. Good afternoon. Jamar could not be here with us this evening, but I would be remiss if I not stop by and just tell you about this remarkable young man who has stolen the hearts of us at Shoal River Middle School. Believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside you that is greater than any obstacle. 
This quote by Christian Larson describes Jamar Jones. Jamar tries to act a little tough, and he likes nothing that really bothers him, but he really cares deeply for those of us who perceive that we really care about him. Jamar has struggled in the traditional classroom setting. However, his ability to problem solve is really to be admired. Due to his life circumstances, Jamar has a glass that is half empty outlook most of the time. But when Jamar has success, his smile can lighten up a room. And if you look at the picture in the back of the bulletin, you will see that smile that will capture your heart. Jamar is loyal to a fault. He understands we all have difficulties, but he is extremely hard on himself, particularly when judging himself through the lens of his academics and his education. Jamar is creative. He's a problem solver. He sees things from a different perspective than most of his peers do due to his life circumstances. He's very charismatic, and he could very easily be a leader if his self-concept about himself could strengthen. One of my fondest memories of Jamar is that he likes to talk, he likes to joke, but he thought he wrote the book on how to be a professional uh, checkers player. I said, well, Jamar, you know, I'm from Mississippi, and that's what we do there. So he kept joking, he kept joking. I said, okay, Jamar, I guess I'm going to have to show you. So I snuck over there to the resource room one day, and we had a little educational time where Jamar and I played checkers. So in a matter of a few minutes, his, his mouth was taken open. She blocked me out. I said, yes, I did. I tried to tell you, Jamar, I wrote the book on playing checkers. <laughs> now, his version of that story is quite different from mine. So we will have a rematch before he leaves to go to Crestview High School. But just Jamar is just outstanding. And I know that he, as he goes on to achieve his life's goals, his story will be one that he can go out and help others, and his story will be powerful. So it is indeed my honor and my pleasure on behalf of the faculty, the staff, and the student body at Show River Middle School to tell you about our inspirational student hero, Jamar Jones. Silver Sands School is happy to name Alex Boutwell as their 2019 Cox Hero, and Mandy Prescott will tell us why. I'm Mandy Prescott, I've been with Silver Sands School for 19 years, and um, I, this is my first year to have Alex. Um, we have had um, a pretty good, we've had a really good year, but we started out kind of rocky. Um, Alex has a great personality and sense of humor. He has a big heart. He loves unconditionally. He has big hugs for everybody. He is very friendly. Um, he loves to participate in class most of the time. He loves to be praised for his efforts and his successes. He has two younger sisters that he is very proud of and talks about a lot. He plays baseball with the Challenger League. He enjoys playing basketball. He loves to sing and listen to music and dance. Yeah. To kids' bop. That's what he said, kids bump. <laughs> um, Alex's biggest challenge in the last few years has been communication. Alex has difficulties with receptive and expressive language skills. Um, this caused a lot of frustration for him, uh, made it difficult for him to communicate his wants and needs, his opinions, um, and which led to some behaviors that we had to, we had to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> And when I got him this year, it was, we started out the year with battle of the wheels. It was who was going to win, me or Alex. Um, but we've, we've come a long way, haven't we? Yeah. Yes. Um, two years ago, our school had the opportunity to participate in Project CORE, which is a research-based project funded um, by the Stepping Up Technology um, Grant through the U.S. Department of Education, Special Education Programs is directed by the Center of Literacy and Disability Studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It is a classroom-based intervention intended to teach students with the most significant cognitive disabilities 
who are not able to use spoken words or sign language, how to communicate symbolically. After training from our speech therapists and the research team, Project CORE has been implemented throughout our school. We all wear these cards. These are his CORE cards and all staff wear them. He has more than anybody else. Most of us wear one. Alex has a lot to say, so he has many. <laughs> Each card has different things on it. Um, it gives us a way to attribute meaning to nonverbal communication, and which has led to less frustration for a lot of our students. Alex is, a, is like the star student of Project Core. As a matter of fact, they just had me do a write-up on him for their research team for Project Core, explaining and highlighting him as the, a success story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so this school year, with the help of his Project Core, he has um, become very successful. It has improved his frustration, his anxiety levels, which in turn has decreased in his behaviors. He has made significant gains in academic and social skills. Uh, he can now hold meaningful conversations uh, with his peers and staff throughout the school. He's, he's actually become a good tutor for other students in the classroom and around the school by modeling how to use his core boards. Uh, we are extremely proud of Alex and his hard work to overcome his challenges. And he's, he's definitely proof that no matter what your disabilities are, um, limited abilities, um, with the right resources and the right tools, he, anybody can overcome. They can still learn and learn how to be successful, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything you want to tell them? Hunter. Hunter? Yeah. She's not even here. Anything else you want to say on your card? No? Miss Allison. Miss Allison did help you do this, right? Yeah. Yes, she did. Miss Allison helped teach us how to use these, right? Yes. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walker Elementary School's Jaquan Tassin will now be introduced by Susie Gazak. I told my kids today I could stand in front of 200 fifth graders all day long, <laughs> but in front of this many grown-ups, I get a little nervous. Um, Jaquan Tassin was the one they warned me about. He was the one they said had anger issues, violent outbursts, and an attitude problem. I had heard, again from them, that he had a tough home life with zero support so don't expect much. Jaquan showed up those first days of school and said very little. He put his head down a lot, but I could tell he was listening. Then one day his pencil box broke and fell to the floor, sending stuff flying everywhere. I had an extra one in the cabinet. So as he was picking up his things, I handed it to him. He looked me in the eye, maybe for the first time ever, and said, Thank you. With those two words, I knew they were wrong. Or at least they didn't know all we were about to find out. As the school year continued, my teaching partner, Lori Williams, and I began to see a young man coming out of the darkness. He started playing at recess instead of just standing back watching. He smiled. He asked questions, he laughed, and he sang, hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog, <laughs> as he walked into the classroom. He began to pay it forward. He started encouraging others to do their best. When things were challenging for him in the classroom, he did get frustrated, but instead of shutting down like they told me that he would, he dug in and decided that he was going to keep battling. He wasn't going to let his obstacle stop him. Instead, he conquered it by sheer determination, asking for help when needed, and never quitting. 
In the classroom and on the basketball court, he is a confident leader who works to put into action the things his coaches have taught him. Then he brings those lessons back to the classroom with his quiet strength and challenges all of us to give our full eyes, ears, and effort. With, love, with the love and support that he has gained from his coach and family, Jay has become a solid student with a bright outlook, and I am so proud to say that he's my inspirational hero. Our final hero for 2019 comes from Wright Elementary School. Susie Garcia will be introduced by Lynn Mahan. It is my honor to introduce to you the delightful Susie Garcia. And you can see the smile on her face, and this is every single morning. She walks in, this is what her face looks like. Big smile, glad to be there every day. Sometimes Susie has to stand at her desk or at a standing desk because of leg cramps. Sometimes she has to put her head down because the vision in one eye, Susie has cerebral palsy, but she does not let that hinder her at all. She's an inspiration to everyone in the classroom. She's bilingual. She's not an ELL student, but she is bilingual, which is a huge help, as many of you know, in our classrooms. So she's able to mentor other students. She also um, shared some things with the class. Earlier this year, we had some bullying going on and she volunteered to share with our class how bullying had affected her when she was younger because of the way she walks. And students were able to learn from that. Selflessly, she shares some of her personal experiences. She's also an ambassador at our school. So when we have visitors, whether it's new students or any adults coming to our school, she will help show them around. And um, she's just a delight to have in a classroom every single day. My honor, Susie Garcia. Let's give all these students one more round of applause. Uh, before we close, I would like to encourage all the schools to recognize these students in your school. Uh, include them in the newsletter, put their name up on the marquee, celebrate them on their morning announcements, whatever way you seem appro feel appropriate. Let's recognize these students for everything they have overcome. Thank you to everybody for joining us today. This does conclude the 2019 Cox Inspirational Student Hero Awards. If the students could all come forward, we're going to take a group shot right here. I'm going to move the podium out of the way, and we'll get everybody together for a group picture. Thank you.